I see some people saying that、um, maybe、um, it's kind of difficult to scale the big Rails application into the like, enterprise sized application.、Um, I think that's because of the、um, their, the programming, it requires like, a mature level of the programming,、um, basic knowledge. And they, I personally think if they just want to avoid. Um, the, the spaghetti code, or like code, it's really hard to maintain、um, the modules shared with other you know, the components in the same、uh, project. But、um, what, what, what do you think about like, that opinion? So, is, is it true, or do you think it's still、um, manageable in very size Rails application by a、um, large number of the team or people? I think a fundamental truth is that it is very difficult to write large software applications. That is true whether you write、right. them in Ruby on Rails,、right. whether you write them in Java, whether you write them in Go, Python, Django, whatever. It is very difficult, and it has been difficult since the invention of software development to have very large teams working on software development. Ruby on Rails、um, does a lot to push back against that, does a lot to offer. Standards and conventions such that it is easier for many developers to work together and use the same patterns than many other environments and languages that give you no guidance and makes it even harder still to, to, to do this work on a, a very large scale. But if you look at the kind of applications that、uh, Ruby and Rails have been built with over the years GitHub, Shopify, Airbnb, Sendesk. Cookpad, Square, yeah, Cookpad. Stripe.、Yeah, right. There's a very, very long list of、mm-hmm. enormous applications. I think Shopify showed us、uh, just recently, Toby tweeted, they have 1.2 million lines of code wow, in the main <laughs> Shopify application. That is a huge application.、Mm-hmm. And of course, they are going to hit challenges. When you're dealing with a 1.2 million line application that is being developed by hundreds or thousands of people that are unique. That is the thing that happens when you reach the outer rims of software development, regardless of which language it is. When you look at, for example, Facebook and their use of PHP, they essentially had to invent their own derivative. Of PHP to be able to, to do what they do because they are at the outlying、uh, edges of what is possible in software development. How large can you make an application and still make progress? So these are universal industry wide challenges, but I can see how someone who might not have had a lot of experience hitting those challenges in other languages would go, oh, it's because of Ruby and Rails, because that's the thing I'm <laughs>、right. programming in. I'm now facing these challenges. Ergo, it must be because of the environment that I'm working with, rather than zooming back and saying, you know what? This is a challenge in all environments. There is no environment on earth that h a v e figured、right. out, oh, it's totally easy to make a 1.2 million line application, have hundreds of developers work in it, and you will have no difficulties at all. Nothing、yeah. scales like that. The entire profession of software development. Is essentially a one long saga of large software projects failing.、Mm-hmm. Um, right. I think if you were to sum up the history of large software projects on the scale of millions of lines of code, you would say the vast majority of them have failed over、mm-hmm. the many decades the software development has been a thing.、Right. So I think it, it, I, can, I can see where people are coming from because when they hit these challenges, it is frustrating.、Um, And you look for, you look for、uh, answers outside of yourself because it is hard to look inside of yourself and your own organization、right. and say, you、right. know what? Part of the problem here is that、um, we didn't write good enough software. We didn't have good enough、uh, architects setting up our architecture for the software. We didn't take the time to stop and pause and get in a Proper direction when things were starting to go wrong because we were so much in a hurry. Again, this is what happens in all organizations, and we're all looking for someone to blame except for ourselves. So,
So Rails, this is exactly. why Rails mm -hmm. and Ruby must accept that blame because Ruby on Rails has been phenomenally successful. All these companies I just listed off are these enormous billion dollar companies with thousands of employees. Um, almost no other web development framework in the history of software development on the internet have ever achieved this amount of um, penetration as, as Ruby on Rails has. So of course, we're also gonna get a proportionate amount of people saying, this is bad because I hit trouble. Mm -hmm. All right, so problem is not um, really in the framework itself, but uh, um, that's because of your um, teams or uh, skills, or workflow, your company culture. Um, the problem is not limited to the framework itself. So. Uh, I well, think well, and also just the industry. It's not even just like, this is software. This is what software right. looks like. Software right. is very, very difficult when you have a million lines of code and hundreds of people working on it. There is no, it's not because we necessarily are, are bad programmers or we could just write it differently or we could write it better. That is a utopia that's never going to happen. We have to mm -hmm. accept that software development at this scale is incredibly hard. No one has figured it out. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't differences, that you can't do better or worse. You absolutely can. Um, and I think that Rails in particular does really well with this. And one of the reasons is that we have a really active um, community, including these very large companies, both GitHub and Shopify in particular, have several people on the Rails core team, some on the Ruby core team as well. And they are putting the learnings they have from working on these enormous applications into the framework, making it easier for the next generation of very large companies to take advantage. And then of course, I think perhaps the more important fact is that these companies we just talked about, the GitHub, the Shopify, the Airbnb, the Senda, Square, Cookpad, whatever, they're like the 0.001%. 99.999% of all applications will never encounter those difficulties because they will never write a million lines of code. Um, right. They will be far right. smaller. They will deal with much smaller problems. And it just won't be an issue. You can get away with um, with so much less difficulty if you're just 20 people, 50 people, mm -hmm. even 100 people. Um, these other companies exist in a completely different sphere that we should be very careful not to overanalyze, not to over extract lessons from and think that that is something that applies to everyone. It's absolutely not. Right. Because mm -hmm. the idea of the Ruby on Rails um, was born in fact when you're in the 37 signals, maybe, or even before that. So you're the only person developing the uh, entire web application and you have to deal with everything you have to do to maintain the services. So uh, yes. I think that's the background of the framework. So that's it's, it's natural um, to um, keep, you know, uh, the current format the, of the frame, uh, framework was built. So, uh, and that. I think this is also, this is an important point because, I mean, I'm biased because obviously this is how Ruby on Rails developed. So I'm going to look back and think that was a great way of doing it. But I do think that if you make something that is simple enough to understand so that a single person can understand it and do it, you're helping mm -hmm. everyone. You're also right. helping the company mm -hmm. that has a thousand developers um, because ultimately all software is written by individual brains, individual right. brains who have to understand everything. And it is better for everyone if we make a framework that is so approachable, simple, um, understandable that one person can work with it um, versus if you go the other way and you make a framework that's designed primarily for companies that have a thousand employees or 10,000 employees, you're then guaranteed that such a framework is never going to work in a productive, good, healthy manner for a team of one, a team of 10, a team of 20. So I think the focus of who do we design for is very directional. If you design for the single individual, that can scale to very large uh, applications and companies. If you design for very large applications and very large companies, 
it's almost guaranteed that it cannot work for smaller teams. Right. So, yeah, uh, so, uh, so David, uh, I once saw your tweet uh, saying the Rails is for your next startup. Is it correct? Uh, yeah, so, so Rails is for, for yourself. But, but yes. Next, next, anyway. Yes, that, that is that ideal, right? Because right now, I work at a company that's not just one person, right? I, and I haven't for a very long time been the only person um, doing Ruby on Rails. That is uh, 18 years ago. So it's a long time <laughs> ago. Uh, today I work with a, a large team of great programmers, great operations people, great designers, but I continue to hold that ideal in my head that if I had to start over from scratch and I had to build something entirely by myself, I still want Ruby on Rails to be the ideal framework for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm at times even to some extent kind of discarding writing Rails for who we are today, or not discarding, but um, de-emphasizing how, um, how we set things up. I don't want Ruby on Rails to end up being a specialist framework in the sense that you have to have a multitude of different people who each understand one little part and you have to have a team of 10 people to build anything of note. No, I want to be able to think if I have to start over tomorrow as a single developer, Ruby on Rails is not only going to be a great choice because it's good to start with, but it's going to be so good that as a single mm -hmm. developer, I could do Basecamp again. We could start something like Basecamp, or you could start Shopify, or you could start GitHub, or you could start any of these other companies. And the framework would allow you to both start there and to get all the way up to a GitHub or a Shopify. So what happens with, with a lot of software over time is that it gets more and more complicated um, because the people who started it end up in more and more complicated situations. And this is one of those key dangers I'm constantly on the lookout for. Let's make sure that even though a bunch of the people who work on Ruby on Rails today don't work as in single developers, that that's who we are designing for. We cannot design primarily for GitHub, Shopify, or even Basecamp, or even Hey, or even any of these other ones. We have to keep in mind that we're primarily designing for the next startup. That's what's going to keep the framework fresh, understandable, and better for everyone. ご視聴ありがとうございました良ければチャンネル登録グッドボタンお願いします。<音楽>